we're going to Luxor to see the temples on the west bank of the Nile and visit a number of tombs in the Valley of the Kings. We'll also try and discover what happened to the pharaoh's mummies and their treasures. Here we are coming into Egypt and arriving in Luxor. Welcome to Luxor, or Thebes, which was the name for Luxor in times past, when it was a very important city. This started as early as 2000 BCE, after the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt. At that time, Thebes became the capital city for about a thousand years. Every year, lots of tourists arrive in Luxor to visit the many temples and tombs in the nearby Valley of the Kings. Luxor has often been called the greatest open-air museum in the world. This is because the temples of Karnak and Luxor stand within the city itself. Now before we go too far, I'd like to give you some insight into the pharaohs and the dynasties of ancient Egypt. This chart shows a list of all the pharaohs dating back to 2600 BCE. That's almost 5000 years ago. It started way back during the time of the Great Pyramid with King Khufu and goes all the way up to the last Egyptian pharaohs around the time of Cleopatra in 176 BCE. We're going to focus on the period known as the New Kingdom, as the temples and tombs of this period are the ones we'll actually be visiting. During this period of Egyptian history, the pharaohs had decided to hide their tombs and treasures in the Valley of the Kings away from grave robbers. Our route out of Luxor goes along this road where we will pass the Colossi of Memon and also visit the temple of Hatshepsut and then go on to the Valley of the Kings. As you can see, this clip was shot from an air balloon, but that's the subject for another video coming soon. We start at the Colossi of Memon, which has stood here since about 1300 BCE. The southern statue is one complete stone. The other northern statue is in several pieces, and this may have cracked due to weathering. These were well known to the ancient Greeks and Romans, as well as modern travellers. The Colossi of Memon stand at the entrance to the mortuary temple of Amenhotep III. The purpose of the temple was for the making of offerings to Amenhotep after his passing. By and large, the whole temple has been destroyed, mainly due to it being on the floodplain of the Nile, and also as a result of some earthquakes. One of the temples still standing in this area is that of Ramses II, an area known as the Ramseum. The reign of Ramses II is considered by many to be the pinnacle of Egyptian art and culture, as he was responsible for building a lot of temples and structures, many of which can still be seen today. Ramses II lived to about 90 years old and outlived many of his sons and heirs. Eventually he was succeeded by Merneptah. From the 4th century BCE, these temples were used mainly as stone quarries and were dismantled so that the blocks could be used in other buildings. This is one of the reasons why there isn't much left of the original temples in this area. Those tunnel-like buildings are workshops, sheds and storerooms and sleeping accommodation, some of which were built as recent as the Roman times. We're now moving over to the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut, who was one of the few female pharaohs. After her three brothers and her half-brother had died, 
she inherited the throne as the pharaoh's daughter. Initially, she reigned as regent beside her two-year-old nephew, Tomius III. But after a few years, she assumed the title of pharaoh and began to present herself as a male in male clothing. And you can see in some of her statues, she has a false beard. Hatshepsut was the longest reigning female pharaoh and was known as the woman who was king. The Egyptian economy flourished during her time as pharaoh and she directed the construction and repair of many buildings, memorials and temples. Hatshepsut is also thought to be the pharaoh's daughter who adopted Moses. She was born in 1541 BC and would have been about 15 years old at the time when Moses was born. This is the chapel of Hathor, who is the goddess of love, music, beauty, fertility and the protector of women. She is also the guardian of this area known as Der El Baudi. You'll notice these two columns with uh, female heads which have uh, cow's ears. This is Hathor. You'll also notice the two coppers in the crown above her. On this wall there's a scene where Hatshepsut is dancing before Hathor, who is in the shape of a cow, who licks the hand of the pharaoh. However, you'll notice that Hatshepsut has almost been erased. This was done by Tomius III, her stepson. We're unsure as to why this happened, but it seems that Tomius III wanted to erase all trace of Hatshepsut from her temple about 20 years after his reign began. This is the southwest portico, and here illustrated on the walls is the expedition to Pond, which is an area where Somalia and Ethiopia are at the moment. If you had an archaeologist's eye and a technology, this is something of what can be seen on this wall. It shows goods being brought to the land of Punt and also exotic goods coming back to Egypt from Punt. This is the chapel to Amun, the god of sun and air, and who Hatshepsut believed was her spiritual father. In each corner there's a statue of Hatshepsut, and in the six porticos there were statues of Amun. Here in the sanctuary you can see images of Hatshepsut making offerings to Amun. Now from her temple we're just going over the mountain to Hatshepsut's tomb which is KV20 where she's buried with her father Tomius I. This is the Valley of the Kings, where most of the pharaohs of the New Kingdom, that is, the 18th to the 20th dynasties, have their tombs. The valley was used for the pharaoh's tombs from about 1539 BCE until about 1057 BCE. The valleys contain at least 63 tombs, beginning with Tomius I and ending with Ramses X or XI. The first tomb we're going to visit is that of Merneptah, or KV-8. This is the sign outside the tomb in the Valley of the Kings, which shows a diagram of the tomb. As we go through the tomb, you can follow the red circle to see exactly where we are in the tomb. The tomb stretches for about 160 metres. This tomb has suffered from many flash floods coming down the valley, and it wasn't until 
1903 that the rear half of the tomb was excavated and the burial chamber wasn't excavated until 1987. Any of the plaster work and the paintings or murals on the walls that have survived are in reasonably good condition. The burial chamber originally held a set of four sarcophagi. This one here is that of Mernepta. There was no treasure found here in Mernepta's tomb. However, 150 years later, after his death, a sarcophagus of his was given to and used by Gusens I, who was known as the Silver Pharaoh. He reigned in the northern city of Tanis in Lower Egypt. At this time, Egypt had been split into Upper and Lower Egypt, with the priests ruling Upper Egypt and the Silver Pharaoh ruling Lower Egypt. We're now moving to the tomb of Tausert and Setnat, or KV-14. Tausert's reign only lasted a year or so, and it seems Setnat took over and started a new dynasty when she died. We're unsure as to how Tausert's reign ended. Initially, Setnat had started a new tomb of his own. However, when they tunneled into another tomb by mistake, he decided to take over the tomb of Tausert as his own. Setnat usurped Tausert's tomb and claimed it for his own, as he changed the text on the walls to his name, removing that of Tausert. This scene of the ram-headed bird is the final scene from the Book of Caverns showing the reappearance of the sun god Ra at dawn. Setnat did add to the original tomb with this burial chamber which has a number of columns in it. This is the sarcophagus of Sedna. The next tomb we're visiting is that of Ramses III, our KV-11. There are ten small chambers built into the first corridor of the tomb and these illustrate everyday life in Egypt with people doing everyday jobs such as sewing and baking. This is the tomb that Setnat had started but it tunneled into another tomb by mistake so his son Ramses III decided to use it as his tomb. However, he changed the direction of the tomb by turning a corner and going in a slightly different direction. This area here is where they made the initial mistake of following into another tomb. Now this tomb of Ramsay III has never been completely studied or excavated. There is a team working on it at the moment, but this is as far as we can go for now. Now we can't leave the Valley of the Kings without mentioning Tutankhamun. We didn't get to visit the tomb, 
but here you can see the sign outside and this illustration shows how it appeared when Howard Carter discovered it initially. You can see in this drawing that the sarcophagus of Tutankhamun was covered with many outer layers. In the rooms around the sarcophagus were the many treasures and trophies that were placed there to help Tutankhamun in his travels in the inner worlds. It's thought he took the throne around the age of 8 or 9 and died around the age of 19. This is a photo of how the sarcophagus of Tutankhamun looked when it was initially opened. We've added some colour to give it a bit more depth and to show you how it probably appeared at that time. And this is how it now looks in the museum, all very nicely polished up. So what happened to the treasures of the pharaohs? We know that almost one in four tombs were reappropriated or usurped by the pharaohs that came after them. There are also many records of state sponsoring plundering of tombs and there are other records of thieves being punished for robbing and plundering. We've seen where a sarcophagus belonging to Merneptah was used in the tomb of the silver pharaoh in Tanis, near Alexandria. This was obviously donated to the pharaohs by the priests of Thebes at the time. So it seems that the pharaohs helped themselves to the treasures of their ancestors, often when they built their own tombs or when the economic times were difficult. By the end of the New Kingdom period, around the 21st dynasty, Egypt had entered into a time of economic and political decline. The priest of Thebes had grown more powerful and effectively ruled Upper Egypt. The valley of the kings began to be heavily plundered, so the priests of Amun began to open the tombs to protect the mummies and move them. A lot of the mummies were moved to a well-hidden tomb in the valley above the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut, and some were moved to the tomb of Atenhotep II. At this point, only the mummies remained. Their treasures were long gone. As time went by, the tombs were used for various purposes. In Coptic times, some were used as churches and some were even used as houses. Then around the 1860s, some locals discovered the royal cache of mummies above the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut. Because items such as canoptic jars and funeral papyri from the tomb began to show up in the antiquities market in Luxor, this was as early as 1874. When the authorities became aware of these items, they tracked down those responsible and persuaded them to reveal the location of the tomb. They discovered about 50 royal mummies in the tomb, which were quickly removed and sent to the Cairo Museum for safekeeping. The tomb of Amenhotep II, or KV-35, was discovered in 1898, and with him was a cache of about a dozen mummies containing several New Kingdom pharaohs. There were only a few tombs which have remained undisturbed. That is, Tutankhamun, which was discovered in 1922, and the tomb of the silver pharaoh, discovered in 1940. Unfortunately, the silver pharaoh's treasures, that were not of metal, had rotted away because of the damp and floods around the Nile Delta at Tanis. Because these tombs lay hidden until the last century, it gives us some idea of the treasures that accompanied each of the pharaohs in their tombs. If you'd like to see these treasures, you can visit the Grand Egyptian Museum in Giza. Most of these treasures have been housed in the Cairo Museum and will be relocated to the Grand Egyptian Museum when it fully opens, which is supposed to happen sometime in 2024. If you'd like to see some of these treasures, have a look at this video on the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. So I hope you enjoy your time 
exploring and discovering the treasures of Egypt.